Hi, everybody. It's Richard Silver again from Sotheby's International Realty in Canada, and I'm interviewing my friend or new friend, Mike Garza, and he is with Briggs Freeman out of Dallas. Am I right? Oh. Fort yep. Worth? I'm in Fort Worth, but Fort Worth. Briggs Freeman, Sotheby's International Realty Perfect. kind of dominates all of North Texas. And so uh, we have offices throughout the DFW Metroplex spanning from Fort Worth over to Dallas. Great. So personally, just because not a lot of us know you yet and you're new to our group, uh, tell me personally who you're, who's your client and what do they normally buy? Sure. Well, Richard, thanks for having me on this morning. Okay. Um, my, my client ranges from the first time home buyer, whether it's a single uh, medical professional or a, a newlywed a couple or um, in often cases, most recently, I've been working with a lot of uh, young families that are transitioning from their first home into their second home. Um, but I've, I've also worked with, you know, just it, it, it spans across, uh, ac across the range of ages. So um, I hear a lot about Dallas Fort Worth and you specialize more in Fort Worth, but tell me, tell me about Fort Worth. What makes it different than, um, than Dallas? Why would I go there instead? Great question. So yes, I live in Fort Worth and Dallas is just about a, a 30 minute drive east of where I'm sitting right now. Oh. And um, very, very different communities from each other. So um, I have actually never done a transaction or represented a client in Dallas. Um, all of my business is going to be in Fort Worth proper in the surrounding suburbs. But um, Fort Worth has a lot of nicknames. One of them is Funky Town. And uh, I, I think that's because it's just kind of a, a funky place to, to live. It's, it's very diverse. Um, there's a lot of heritage here between right. um, um, cattle and cowboys. And um, one of the other nicknames that we have here is, is Panther City. And this is a fun story. Uh -huh. uh, it was probably... 80 to 100 years ago, there was a, a well-known businessman who came from Dallas over to Fort Worth in downtown. And um, he, was, he was very kind of underwhelmed at that point in time. Uh, when he went back to Dallas, uh, he, there was some kind of article or something. And, and he said, you know, Fort Worth is, is so slow. It's so boring. I was in the middle of downtown Fort Worth and I saw a panther sleeping <laughs> in the middle of uh in the middle of the road and, and yeah. so there just wasn't a whole lot of um excitement at that time i guess yeah yeah but um it's what, people, it's what people want these days they want the quiet they're you know the, i live in the center of a big city and sometimes i just think oh it would be nice to have a like slower pace yeah and and i think that's what fort worth has to offer is yeah. a it, it, it's a slower pace um, it, it, you might be sitting or standing next to a, a millionaire at the bank in line. There's a lot of oil money here. Um, and, and you would never know it because people are generally pretty modest here. Um, it's not about the, the, the flashy car and, um, you know, flaunting how much money you have. And so yeah. there's, there's some rivalry there between, uh, Fort Worth and Dallas and, um, it's just, it's, it's not as much traffic. I think people are, are uh, maybe just a little more relaxed, um, whereas Dallas, it's, it's a little more fast paced. And so um, I, I feel like I fit in pretty well here because that suits my personality. And, and yeah, that's, that's great. Now you're married and you have two kids, um, a three-year-old and a... And a one-year-old. One-year-old. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah and, uh, and don't say diapers to you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, we're, we're, we're still changing a lot of diapers right now. Little Levi um, is, is a year yeah. old. And, oh, great. Uh, and Stella is three. And so this has been a, Fort Worth is a great place to raise a family. Um, we're really active with um, our neighborhood here. Um, right. It's, it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, pretty decent schools, very affordable cost of living. Um, we, there's, there's so much to do. We have um, an art scene and a music scene and uh, it's, it's wonderful. 
Well, hopefully we'll come and visit soon, as soon as they let us out of our, our houses. I can see you got a fresh haircut there. Yes, sir. <laughs> so everybody, a lot of guys, uh, may, maybe including yourself, are yeah. dealing with how am I going to cut my hair right now? All the salons yeah. and the barber shops are closed. And so I decided to just start fresh and um, I actually did it two weeks ago in yeah. an effort, uh, to show solidarity with leukemia and lymphoma uh, survivors. Ah, right. So I'm, I'm participating in a, in a fundraising challenge right now. It's over the span of 10 weeks. And yeah. so uh, that's the reason for my shaved head, but it's- Yeah, listen, back. I like it. Yeah. You know, in these days, I was sort of thinking, I, I did have a bit of a trim this morning. A friend of mine was over and he did the best he could with my hair. But, you know, part of me just says, you know what, just maybe take, you know, what, what did you take, a number two or number one, or what did you take and just do it? It was a zero. Yeah, no. A zero. Oh, my yeah, God. No, no card. So it was, yeah, it was pretty short, but yours, yours is looking pretty fresh, Richard. Nicely. You, <laughs> there must be, uh, must be a lot of room now in your 10-gallon hat. Don't you guys have to wear that every time you walk out? Yeah, I actually contemplated wearing mine for you today. It's, it's sitting in my... <laughs> my passenger seat right now in my car so yeah always ready so you got your coronavirus masks and then you got your 10 gallon hat absolutely and so yesterday was pretty big news uh the, the governor of texas named governor yeah. abbott um, had a press conference and announced that uh, as of friday may 1st the uh the state is reopening and it's going to be in a couple different phases but yeah, yeah the face mask will still be very much present for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's going to take us a while to get over this, uh, not, not just the, the disease itself, but I think there's going to be a huge economic fallout. And, uh, you know, a lot of my friends are, you know, saying, oh, the market's going to be great. Ah, da, 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 and there's pent up demand. And, uh, and I'm going, not when so many people lose their jobs. Right. You know? You got to be prepared to tell your clients the truth and say, you know, we, I, redu I went to clients Friday, reduced the house, sold yesterday. Wow. And I'm just saying all my clients just get, let's get to your bottom line right away. No fluff. Let's yeah. get there and sell the house because better to sell at the top than it is at the bottom. Absolutely. And so we're, we're, we're in Texas. Uh, we, we've had a really strong economy. Uh, we've had yeah. Hundreds of companies and, and corporations relocate their headquarters here over yeah. the last 10 years. And so, um, while, yes, this is the, uh, a pretty bad time for um, our, our entire country, as well as Canada, North America, yeah. the world. Health, yeah. Um, I think Texas is going to continue to, to thrive uh, because of, of just, it's a strong economy. And so, 2008 in that recession, yes, we were hit pretty hard, but we were kind of insulated. Um, yes. So we're, we're hoping that the same thing, we bounce back from this pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, it did change the way we do business and this is really gonna change the way we do business. And I don't think it's necessarily in a bad way. You're using, even using lots of technology before and DocuSign and, you know, signing technology. And what what new things have you added besides Zoom? What, what new things have you added to your, uh, your storehouse of technology? So um, I've actually put a stop to working with, with buyers altogether right now. So oh. I'll, start by, I'll start by saying that. Um, yeah. I've actually referred a couple of close friends who were in the middle of looking to yes. make a purchase. And I said, guys, I, I love you, but um, I, need to, I need to do what's best for me and my family. And in order for me to minimize my, my contact and with, with this virus, I, I just, I, I don't want to be going into other people's homes right now because I have two children and I'm the sole provider for my family and right. it was just too risky. So I ended up referring a couple of home buyers to some other agents in my company. Uh, so that's, that was kind of step one. Yeah. Um, on, on the other hand, um, I'm, I'm still advising and counseling some of those buyers who are on the fence and just not ready to make the jump yet. And my response to them has kind of been the same thing. If you're absolutely in a hurry and need to be in a, in a, in a new home in 45 days, I will make accommodations so that we can make mm -hmm. that happen. But it's probably not going to be me representing you uh, for, for the reasons of safe, safety and health. Um, yeah. 
sellers, however, I feel like there's a there's been a little bit more control there. And so I, I was on three listing appointments last week alone. I'll go on another uh, one or two this week. And um, but virtual virtual listing appointments or face to face? It's face to face. So you know, just wearing wearing the mask and uh, removing my shoes at the door and ensuring that there's uh, at least you know six feet when we're sitting at at, at their uh, dinner table. Um, right. But you asked about technology, so absolutely, we've been using Zoom. Um, been doing a lot more videos. Uh, so for the listings that have that are hitting the market over the last uh, 30 days, I've just been incorporating, incorporating a lot of um, amateur videos that I take on my phone, but yeah. also doing a professional videographer. Um, and then the, the third component to that would be Matterport. So the three yes. virtual tours have also been very effective. Yeah, I think we should have had shares in Matterport, all of us, you know, we should have, uh, you know, we'd have gotten back from all of this, this, I mean, I saw Matterport years ago, and I thought, well, it's great, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But now it's just almost as if it's a given that every property you list should have a Matterport. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so if we go on, I mean, now we're talking about opening on May 1st, but if we have another wave of this or this continues, um, any thoughts on the future or any, if you sat down and said, oh my God, what are we going to do? Absolutely. So uh, there, there, there's a lot of unknowns, right? And um, yeah. after I listened to Texas State Governor uh, Abbott speak at the press conference yesterday on TV, of course. He was right. down in Austin, which is three, three and a half hours south of where I am in Fort Worth. Um, there was a, a poll that the the news took and it said, you know, do, do you feel like it's too soon? And overwhelming majority said, yes, it's too yes. soon. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm of that opinion myself. Um, even if phase one of the state of Texas opening is, is this Friday. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in no hurry to get my, my children to, you know, the, our favorite Mexican restaurant down the street. Yeah. Because it's just, it's too soon. So yeah. um, I've heard, I had an opportunity to, to listen to an expert economist here uh, in, in Texas recently over uh, a webinar and yeah. mentioned that, yeah, come June and July, yes, we're going to have some of that pent up um, inventory and it's mm -hmm. probably going to go pretty quickly. He's very optimistic that interest rates are, are going to dip once again to try and get us out of Bolster. this this recession that we're heading into. So um, there's just... My, you, said my the, you said the R word. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so, it's there and it's, it's like you're either going to be prepared for it or you're not. But I, I shake, shake my head at some of the agents who just are not even thinking that we are, you know, there's no way you can lose this many jobs and not go into a recession. Right. Yeah. And so his, happens. His, his definition, I guess, yeah. is you got to have six months Two, of uh, you know, negative, negative yeah. job losses and, and um, anyhow. So yeah, he said, we're, we're definitely there. It, it might be a temporary recession. We're going to come out of it pretty quickly, hopefully. But um, again, I'm just, uh, I'll remain super cautious and I'm um, going to um, try and distance myself from, from jumping back into yeah. uh, a full blown business. And so I'll, I'll give you a quick little makeup of what my team looks like. So um, name of my team is the Garza Group with Briggs Freeman Sotheby's International right, Real. Right. My wife and I um, work together as a team. Um, I we we have different roles. So I work with all the buyers and all the sellers, and she handles all of the the marketing and the social media and the paperwork and the administrative yeah. thing. Um, I'm not really good at. So uh, that's where she thrives. Uh, her so she is licensed. We also have a full time assistant um, who's recently uh, gotten out of uh, the Marine Corps and um, I'm, I'm anxious to get him back to work. He's in the process of getting his license and we also have right. a transition coordinator. She handles everything from contract to close. So I have great support just within my team and then you know behind me in the background is Briggs, uh, Briggs Freeman. Briggs Freeman and, and all the, the marketing team and 
the admins there. So there's, there's a lot of support and I, I feel like I don't have to take on everything at once all, all by myself. Yeah. Great people supporting me. Just as a quick, uh, in case it's an issue for some people, are you you're multilingual? Yes, yes. So um, I grew up in South Texas. Um, right. My dad is from Monterey, Mexico. And um, yeah, so my, my Spanish is decent. I will, I will not say that it's perfect, but um, I, I certainly work with, we have a lot of Spanish speaking yeah. clients here in, yeah. in Texas as a whole, but yeah, especially in Fort Worth, so. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, I come from the country where most of our bi, bilingual is uh, Quebecois, the French, and uh, you're in a, an area where it's mostly Spanish. However, I do head every once in a while to uh, Puerto Vallarta and enjoy that. And I love being in Mexico. I love the Spanish culture. It's so oh. much more lively than, than ours is. And it's a lot of fun. And the music. Oh, and the food. Yes. You know? Food. Yes, definitely. I wish I was there right now. Sounds great. I know, I know, I know. I, uh, I have plans for a Christmas holiday next year and half of it's paid for. And I don't know if I, I I'm sure we're going to be able to go, but we'll be wearing masks. Yeah, definitely. You know, that's, that'll be the new tra air travel. Anyways, Mike, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, for those who have not met Mike, it's Mike Garza yes. and with Briggs Freeman in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Yes. And uh, again, thanks very much for, for putting up with us today. Yeah, Richard, thank you again for the time. If you want to follow us and see what we're doing in Fort Worth, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram under uh, Mike and Stephanie Garza. So um, Perfect. thank Perfect. you all. We'll follow you and uh, welcome to the EAN. Thank you so much, Richard. Happy Pleasure. to be part of the group. Take care. Take care. Okay.